Dang it. Hey everybody, this is Richard, and welcome back to Making Something From Nothing. In today's video, we're going to be using the lathe to make a highly concentric part for the mill. And what you see here is the fly cutter that I want to use that has a three-quarter inch shank. Now, the largest collet I have is 5 8 which presents a problem. So I'm going to use the lathe to make this very precise part. We've already gotten a head start over in the introduction, so... Let's pick up where we left off and make us an arbor for this fly cutter. So I have the section that rides up in the collet already completed. It's exactly 5 eighths. Now since I used a lathe dog and turned this in between centers, this part is going to be as accurate as I could possibly make it with the equipment that I have. Okay, I've got my ER32 collet chuck set up in the spindle of the lathe. I've got it's a, a 5 ACR32. It's a great fit on that shaft. So, in order to keep everything as concentric as possible, I'm going to go ahead and machine this hole and this bore being held in the collet. I'm just going to go ahead and lightly kiss this with the shear tool. It's also going to get rid of this mark right here, which is from the lathe dog, and we'll clean up uh, this outside. Okay, we're ready to start poking a hole in this thing. I got a 5 16 We're going to take it in an inch and a half, which is the length of this shaft right here. Then I'm going to bring in a 45 60 force, and then I'm going to use a boring bar to take off the last 50 thousandths, take us to three quarters, which is that diameter right there.
we've got the 5 a shaft that was turned in between centers inside the collet the OD was turned in this collet as well as boring the center so with the equipment that I have that's about as concentric as I can make it and that's a nice slip fit there's really no play so the next operation is to take this over to the mill we'll go ahead and drill it out for two set screws to rest up against this flat and we're going to give it a whirl All right, so basically we have about a thou run out. But what we have to keep in mind, well, to keep this in perspective, the spindle ends right here. And then we've got a collet chuck in the Morse Taper 3. Then we've got my piece up in the 5 ace collet, which I'm sure is an import. And then the piece I machined and we're only at one thou so I'm gonna call that a success for one thou over what about four inches I don't think I could have really gotten any better than that not with the equipment I've got and the mill that I have so I'm pretty happy with that I bought this Indicol when I first got the lathe knowing one day I'd have a mill and for the price I got this at I couldn't pass it up but this thing is really nice and that's a uh, brown and sharp best test half thousandths indicator love this thing Hey everybody, it's the next day and I've already verified that the part is parallel to the table. I've already found the edge. The edge finder I'm using is a half inch in diameter. The diameter of my part is 1.44. So we're going to move the table in that direction 970 thousandths and that should put us right in the center of the part. And I'll be right back. I have to get rid of this woodpecker trying to put a hole in my shop. And let me get my safety glasses on. And we'll center drill this. Swapping over to a half inch collet. And fortunately for me, a little over a year ago, in some tooling that I bought, I actually got some drill chucks with milling shanks on it and if I can't get that all the way in I'm gonna have a problem so a bit of corrosion on this I'm gonna clean it up with some steel wool I don't have a ton of travel on this mill, so I need this to go all the way up. 
and it does. This is a 1364 drill. Yep, I definitely see a keyless chuck for this little mill in my future here. Okay, after a bit of time deburring the inside, here's our flat on our fly cutter. We're just going to go ahead and line that up with the two holes. And boy, that's a nice fit. Well, the set screws that I own are obviously too long, so we're just going to shorten two of them up on the lathe. Okay, that looks good. So I'll go ahead and uh, throw this in the collet and we'll shorten that one up too. Can't get it out. Alright, plan B. See how this does. Nice. Okay, let's make sure everything's tight. Well, we don't need to clean the whole thing up. Let's take it out and see what we got. Well, it's not exactly a mirror finish, but uh, it's dang close. So I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the tool that I made. It seems to be doing the job well. Let me clean up this burr, and uh, we'll take a closer look at it in some better lighting.
Well, after a couple of days of working on this in my spare time, I think I'm really happy with this. It looks good. It's functional. It's concentric. And about four inches from the chuck, this thing has about uh, a thou and a half run out maximum. So I'm very happy with this guy. I think I'm going to buy some uh, cold blue and uh, blacken that thing. And here's our piece of aluminum. Not exactly a mirror finish, but uh, darn close. You can see some lines from the fly cutter. But I'm sure that has a lot to do with the rigidity of that mill, the table it's on, and a, a variety of other factors. I need to be able to lock down uh, the X and Y axis on that mill. I need to work on uh, something to go ahead and do that because there's no way to lock the, uh, the tables. So if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate you guys watching. Pretty happy with the build. I'm going to be making some more improvements to the mill. It's not top of the line, but it's getting the job done. I wanted the fly cutter to be able to flatten off a, a pretty large area without doing 14 passes with a, a half inch end mill. So as far as results go, I'm happy with that. And this is Richard, and as always, thanks for watching.